Hi, I'm Corey with Ideal Air. Today I'm going to show you how to install one of our mini split air conditioning units. Each kit comes in two boxes. You have the outdoor unit in one box, you have the indoor unit with the line set in a separate box. With it comes the owner's manual, has the remote control, installation instructions, an Allen wrench you'll need to open up the service valves. Also comes with a wall sleeve, extra drain tube. And these are all the tools that are required to put one of these in. That's it. So I'm going to move this out of the way. This is the mounting plate that comes with the indoor unit. You attach this to this. You can see I have one already installed on the wall here. There's four screws attached to the wall. To make it easier, I'm going to hook it up on our display stand. So you take the indoor unit out of the box, and you hook it up on the panel here. And here I'm going to hook it up on these two hooks. That's all you would do, the same thing if you were hooking up to the, uh, the wall panel. The line set comes welded at the factory to the indoor unit. It's on a vacuum, it's pre-vacuum. So what we do is we suck all the air out of the line. We have these quick connect fittings here to keep it on a 30 pound vacuum. And this line set is made out of a stainless steel braided line. You can see there's copper on the ends, but the actual line itself is a very flexible stainless steel braid. If this was a standard copper line set, like most units have, you wouldn't be able to do this for very long without kinking the unit. This is really user friendly. So you take the box off the unit, and as you can see, here's the quick connect fittings right here. All you need to do is take the cover dust cap off. And all the refrigerant for the whole system is stored in the outdoor unit. There's exactly the right amount of refrigerant for this unit, the 16-foot line set, and the air conditioning coil installed in here. So this unit generally goes outside, and this goes inside your room. So what you would do is when you mount this plate on the wall, you drill a 3-inch hole through your exterior wall, and you feed the line set. It has the control wire in the line set. All you do is simply feed it through the wall to this unit, which you have sitting outside on a concrete pad or a couple of cinder blocks or whatever you have set up. So this is on a flat level surface. So to hook this unit up, remove these two screws. The electrical accent panel. Take the dust covers off of the quick connect fittings. Get this one started. And you want to make sure you don't cross thread these. Now you want to put a back wrench on here so you don't twist the copper and break it loose from the stainless steel line set. You want to get good and snug. You don't want any leaks on this. There you go. 
Now your refrigerant line set is hooked up. You take the control wires that are color coded and numbered. And hook them up inside the outdoor unit panel. The grounding lug is the only one you have to completely remove from the unit. Take number one, which is red to red. Then I take black, which is L2. Go to black. I take white to white, which is L1. Okay, your electrical components are hooked up. As you can see, it's easily numbered, and you can see the color-coded wires: red to red, black to black, white to white. Very simple, very hard to make a mistake when you're doing this. Next thing you do is open up the service valves. Take the included Allen wrench, open up the valves, doesn't matter which one you do first. And because this line set is on a vacuum, all the refrigerant is now being drawn into the line set. And you want to back it all the way out until it stops. When you open up the service valves, make sure you leave them open. You don't want to close these. These need to be open so the refrigerant can flow through the lines. And then always make sure you put the dust cap on to keep the dust out. Now I've already put a plug in on the end of the cord, but you'll have to wire this in yourself. And you want to make sure that each one of these units, whether they're 240 volts or 120 volts, have their own dedicated power circuit, so they need their own breaker. This is very important. The unit's plugged in. I'll take the remote control. You can see the light on here. Turn the unit on. You're blowing cold air. Now the last step, and this is one of the most important steps that you don't want to forget, is after the unit is up and running, you want to take a soapy bubble solution and you want to spray these fittings right here. If there's any leaks, you see a small bubble. If you have a bubble, get your double wrenches out and torque this down just a little bit tighter. You don't want any leaks at all. These things will last for years and years. The refrigerant won't go bad, it won't wear out. If you don't have a good snug tight connection here and you have a leak, you'll be recharging this thing a month, two or three down the road. So once you make sure you don't have a connection, you're good to go. Okay, we have a different style quick connect fitting for the 12,000 BTU. This style that you have here is for the 24,000 and the 36,000 BTU. On the 12,000 BTU, the coupler is much simpler. This is mounted to the unit like this. This is mounted to the line set. So you can see there's a little notch there. So this handle will come down like this. So you lift this handle up, like so. You'll slide this plate, which is hooked up to the line set, through here. Drop that down all the way. There you go. No tools required quick connect. You're up and running and ready to go. This is on the 12,000 BTU models only. And once again, the last step, once you turn the unit on and it's running in the cooling mode, make sure you spray a soapy bubble solution in here and check for bubbles. Most times you won't have a bubble, but if you do, if a piece of dust got in there while you were hooking this up, simply shut the unit off, slide this out, slide it back in again, push the button down and make the quick connection spray it again. No leaks is a good thing. Okay, one bit of information that you'll want to know is the voltage and the amp draw on the Ideal Air Mini Splits. The 12,000 BTU unit runs on 120 volts. It needs a dedicated 15 amp circuit. When it's running, it runs at an even 8 amps. On the 24,000 BTU that runs on 240 volts, you need a dedicated 15 amp circuit, and it draws 10 amps when it's running. And on the 36,000, it's 
240 volts and it runs on 14 amps and you need a minimum 20 amp breaker for that unit.